It's been a minute. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I was planning to be back a lot sooner than right now. Unfortunately, two days before I was gonna film, my husband and I both started feeling very ill. It was like, uh, I don't know if you guys have a similar thing where you can tell like the, your breath feels different. Um, and I was feeling like kind of gravelly in my chest and throat and my eyes were starting to get really red and swollen and like they just felt awful. Like it felt like allergies, but it wasn't allergies. And he was feeling the exact same way. So I decided to, you know, try to nip everything in the bud. We took shots of my homemade fire cider. We took shots of my homemade elderberry syrup. We took shots of my homemade oregano infused oil, which taking a shot of oregano oil is really gross tasting, but it helps so much. And then I did end up making us each a custom tea blend for our symptoms. And with all of those things in conjunction with each other, we started feeling sick on Thursday and we started feeling better on Saturday. So. I wanted to share with you guys at least my fire cider recipe and if the other recipes sound interesting to you let me know in the comments down below because i would be more than happy to make videos on those recipes as well now just a quick let me plea with you real quick before we jump into this recipe if you are feeling so ill that you need to see a doctor please please go see a doctor uh folk medicine herbalism all of that and western medicine can be hand in hand together Typically, I will take my herbs and all of the things that I make, my elixirs and potions, to prevent having to go to the doctor. But sometimes things do fall through the cracks and we do need to see our doctors. So if that is describing you and how you're feeling, please go to the doctor. Don't only rely on herbs, okay? Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about fire cider. Okay, so you're gonna need two mason jars. If you have a really big one, you can. We're going with granny measurements. I am not using cups. I'm not using tablespoons, teaspoons, ounces, none of that. I am just going with my heart and we're using what we have in the kitchen. So if your fire cider recipe ends up looking a little bit different from mine, that is a-okay. The main ingredients that you're going to need though, the at the very least, you're going to need organic apple cider vinegar, with the mother with the mother is very important honestly though i don't think i've ever seen it without the mother so just make sure it says with the mother it'll say it at the bottom i started doing the aldi kind because i've heard a lot of negative things about bragg's now that katy perry and orlando bloom own it who knew anyways this is very very important apple cider vinegar with the mother is the most important ingredient it's me in the future. I completely forgot to add red onion to my recipe, as you'll see later on in the video. So uh, let me just insert that right here. So if you're watching this, about to make it with me, add red onion. Don't be like me. Add red onion. The next thing we're going to use, oranges. We are going to use ginger and garlic. We're going to use lemon, lime, we're going to use jalapeno and a new ingredient for this recipe. I did not put it in any of my other ones, but I'm excited to try it since I have them on hand and they are chock full of antioxidants and great things are cranberries. We're gonna put some cranberries in there. Now, the next thing, I'm gonna put some crushed red pepper. We want this to be hot, hot fire cider. I'm also going to put in some ground turmeric be careful because this will stain your countertops. It's probably better if you have the root, but I don't, we're using what we have. So I'm using ground turmeric. I'm gonna throw some Celtic sea salt in there for the minerals. Organic rosemary, I do have some from my garden, which I could throw in there, but I kind of wanna save that for some other stuff. The next herbs, I'm gonna do marshmallow root because that helps with sore throats. I'm going to do burdock root because that helps with blood circulation. Really get your blood pumping. I'm going to do some olive leaf because that really helps boost your immune system. It's an antioxidant and it's anti-inflammatory. And then I'm going to use nettle because nettle is like 
if I would tell you to get one herb and one herb only, it would be nettle. This is like my cure-all personally. So that is everything that I'm gonna be using for the fire cider. As far as measurements go, for one jar, I'm gonna do like one to two oranges, one full lemon, one full lime, probably half of the garlic, one full um, jalapeno, and then a ton of the ginger. And again, we're measuring everything with our hearts, not with our uh, measuring, measuring cups or anything. So. I'm gonna go ahead and I will insert the footage of me chopping everything up and assembling these fire cider jars for you. Something to note, when I fill these two both up, after I strain them, I end up just getting one bottle like this. Now, you'll see that there's some like kind of silt at the bottom, that's totally normal. That's just the herbs and garlic and all that fun stuff that settles at the bottom. So before you take your fire cider shots, just shake it up so you're getting all of that good stuff dispersed throughout the entire elixir. Fire cider has been used for hundreds of years, so it's a little hard for me to pin down its exact origins. However, I can tell you it was made popular by the wildly talented herbalist Rosemary Gladstar in the 70s with the idea that food and medicine are synonymous. So not only are the ingredients that we're adding to our fire cider alone incredible for immunity, but adding the fermentation element introduces amazing benefits in the form of helpful and good bacteria as well as living enzymes. So what we do once we add our apple cider vinegar over the top of our concoction here, we let it sit in a cool and dark place for four to six weeks so that it can ferment. The garlic, ginger, onion, jalapeno, and our uh, crushed red pepper, our cayenne pepper, in conjunction with the other dried herbs, are all gonna be helping to ward off colds, flus, congestion, and infection. We're adding cranberries in for antioxidants, and the citrus, all of the citrus, the orange, the lemon, the lime, we're adding that in for its vitamin C benefits. Um, and let me just add in right here, I'm not a doctor. This is just something that a lot of people, myself included, use to fight off any kind of illnesses, especially in the winter. Uh, so that said, some people do add honey to this recipe. I do not because I personally like it to be more hot and less sweet. Um, although fermented garlic and honey is incredible for health, health and if that is a video that you would like to see, I can definitely show you how to make fermented garlic in honey. It's delicious. But anyways, back to the video here. So I, as far as cutting things up, just kind of do a nice chunky cut for everything. I personally don't finely chop anything up because I'm gonna be throwing it in that jar anyways, and it's gonna be covered for four to six weeks in that apple cider vinegar. If you prefer to chop it up more finely, definitely feel free. I'm not sure if it makes a huge difference to the fermenting process. And we already discussed measurements. Honestly, use whatever works best for you. Um, there are recipes online that have specific measurements for everything, but I, I just, as far as this kind of uh, medicine making goes, I just kind of like to throw everything in and get all the good benefits that it has to offer without worrying too much if I'm using exact, precise measurements. It's not baking, it's, uh, it's medicine making. So, uh, but I will say for my elderberry syrup recipe, we do use exact measurements, but this is a little bit more loosey-goosey than that recipe is. So, you'll see in a second here when we go to fill up the jar, I'm gonna be putting in the bulkiest stuff first. So that's gonna be the orange slices, that's gonna be the lemon peels, jalapenos, um, the limes, the garlic, and the ginger. Everything that we just chopped up in that past uh, clip is gonna go in there first. And we're also gonna mash it in because I wanna jam as much of this stuff into one jar as I possibly can. 
Like I said earlier, the cranberries are a newer ingredient to me, so I'm not really sure how they're going to break down within the fermentation process. So I am gonna try to like mash them up just a little bit as I'm mashing down the ingredients to fit everything in. And then I will go ahead and add in all of my dry herbs over the top of everything. So there it is. <laughs> I got my nettle there in a spoon and I'm just doing a couple scoops of that over the top. I believe next is our burdock root and I'm just doing one small scoop of that because that is some powerful stuff. I'm gonna be adding olive leaf in over the top as well. I think it's two or three scoops. And I think next is the turmeric, not the turmeric, the marshmallow root. Turmeric, I believe, is next, and then we'll top it off with our salt. And the reason that I'm adding, oh, crushed red pepper too. The reason that I'm adding the um, dry ingredients, all of the herbs and things to the top of it, is because I've added them to the bottom before and I feel like that took up some prime real estate that could have been given to orange slices, jalapenos, all of our ingredients that we chop up. Uh, when I add them to the top of the fire cider and then I pour the apple cider vinegar over the top, it kind of pushes the herbs into the crevices of our bigger ingredients rather than taking up a huge chunk of space just sitting at the bottom of our concoction. So you'll see me adding in a bunch more ingredients, as much of those cranberries as I can, mashing them up, and then we're gonna go ahead and try to start to add in our apple cider vinegar. And again, we want the one with the mother that's gonna have a scoby over the top of it. I think that's what it's called, a scoby. Maybe that's kombucha. Um, but that's gonna be all of our great um, enzymes and it's going to be our good bacteria and that will multiply and our fire cider is going to be like the food source for that good bacteria as well as all of the awesome benefits that we just talked about and with the apple cider vinegar i like to tap my jar against the counter a few times just to get any air bubbles out i will shake it up flip it upside down and get everything kind of moving and shaking. Again, getting the air bubbles up to the top so I have more room to pour more cider in. And from there, I think that should do it. I made a whoopsie with that batch specifically. <laughs> I realized that I completely forgot an entire ingredient. I usually do a huge, huge purple onion or red onion, either one. I call them purple because they're actually purple. So <laughs> I'm gonna make the second batch of fire cider. Purple onion, purple onion, boof, boof, boof. <laughs> I'm gonna make the second batch off camera. But like I said, usually two of these equals, did I put it back already in the fridge? Equals. one of these. So I'm going to put two, probably two red onions in the next one because it'll all mix together in the end anyways. Oh my gosh. I'm so embarrassed that I forgot an entire ingredient. Don't judge me. I remembered. I remembered in the 11th hour. All right, y'all. We've got it right here. Our red onion list fire cider. Don't be like me, remember the red onion. I cannot believe it. I was so worried about setting everything up that I forgot an entire ingredient. But that's okay because we're gonna add double to the second batch and add them all together at the end. So now that you have your fire cider sitting like this, I'm sure you're wondering, what do I do now? You stick it in a cabinet for four to six weeks. So sometimes, I always just put it in my calendar on my phone, but when I make other things, I'll write on the lid when I put it in the cabinet and you can also actually put the date that you're supposed to take it out too but i'll put it in the cabinet i'll go and shake it once to twice a day usually when i wake up in the morning i'll go shake them when my coffee is being made and then before bed i will shake them as well so four to six weeks strain it all put it in a new clean container and you will be good to go this is your catch-all medicine for any colds I don't know about the flu, but colds and any kind of like respiratory ailments, anytime you're not feeling 100%, 
this is what I reach for. So I hope you enjoy the firesider recipe. It will be spicy. It's not going to be the best tasting. Honestly, you could use it as like a marinade or a salad dressing too. That would be good. But anyways, we have our fire cider. We've made it. And I will, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.